My dear child, come sit with me here a while. I see the cares of the world weighing heavy on your shoulders and your heart feeling distant from my love. But you need not walk that lonesome path alone. Lift your eyes to the hills where your strength and refuge will always be found. In this brief moment we share, let the sounds of the earth fade and the cares of the flesh drift away. Look and sigh, where my spirit dwells forever in the deepest places of your being. There you will find the still, small voice that speaks only of love, the love that moves the stars and seas, that knits together every living soul. My child, you were made for so much more than this world can offer alone. In you resides a spark of eternity, a light that outshines even the sun. Do not let the darkness of doubt dim its radiance when all else fails. This light will guide your steps and light your path. The road ahead holds many unknowns, but you need not fear them. I am with you in every moment and each breath you take. Have courage and trust in my faithful love. This love lifted empires and toppled thrones. It can bear you through any storm. When you come to me in prayer, it is your openness, faith, and willingness to listen that I cherish. I am present not just in places of kneeling, but in all points of your day. Speak to me as you walk, work, and wonder. I am by your side in every breath. You need not confine our conversations to moments upon the floor. My desire is not for rigidity but relationship. I long for you to experience the freedom of chatting with me as with a friend. Wherever life finds you, let your prayers be as natural as laughter or tears, as woven into the hours as your very heartbeat. In this way our bond will only deepen. Do not burden your body for my sake, dear one. Guard it as the vessel I have given you. We will walk this road together, you in health, me holding your hand. This is my blessing and promise to you. Have you ever wondered why I let Satan roam free in this world? When I placed Adam and Eve in the garden, my desire was for them to experience the full beauty of unhindered relationship with their Creator. But true love cannot be compelled. It must be chosen freely. So I gave them the greatest gift of all, free will. It is easy to obey when one knows no alternative, but to obey out of genuine love. When the allure of another path stands plainly before you, that is an act of deepest devotion. Only through the presence of real choice can the soul's loyalty be revealed. Did I foresee how Satan would slither in and deceive? Of course, but I also saw how my children's love would be strengthened through facing difficulty and making the right choice anyway. And so the serpent was permitted to bring his temptation that through overcoming it, Adam and Eve might emerge closer to me than ever before. All of history since has unfolded according to this same principle. Though hardship comes, and evil seems to have its day, have faith that I am using even the worst for good. One day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that my way, though mysterious, leads to a love more wonderful than any could imagine. Time does slip through our fingers faster than we'd like, does it not? Yet. Do not despair, for each moment is a gift. Look around. You find yourself here, now, and that is no accident. I placed this encounter before you so that you might hear my voice calling out across the noise of your surroundings. I have waited patiently for your eyes to meet mine once more. The paths of your past no longer matter. All that matters is what you choose to do in this moment that stands between us. Will you take my hand and walk on with me or continue wandering in the darkness alone? I have never stopped loving the sound of your name on my lips.
come and let me breathe it over you as a blessing once more. Let my forgiveness wash your weary soul as waters fresh from the spring, a new beginning is yours. If you desire, within each living thing lies both potential for life and propensity towards decay. So I have designed all of nature to flourish only through constant pruning and renewal. The vine, too, must be shaped and tended. Some parts remove so others may be strengthened. Know that I perform this work with love, not indifference, to bring each creature to its highest purpose. So it is also with my children, whom I desire to bear the sweetest fruits of faith, hope, and love. Some will prove more fruitful than others, yet all were planted by my hand for my glory. Take care not to judge your fellows, little one, I alone can see each heart and mind, discerning what must be removed, so that all may thrive in unity. Trust in my wisdom as the vineyard dresser who guides your growth. Walk in obedience to my leading, not according to fleeting fancies or what seems easy. In time you will understand why some parts must wither that the whole may live. There is no place in all the vastness of creation where any can flee from my eternal presence. In the heights of heaven or depths of hell, in the depths of the sea or barren wastelands, you will find me there. I am everywhere at once through my spirit, and nothing exists outside my sovereign will. Yet know that my desire is not for any to dwell in torment to walk ever in my light and love. Tis why I fashion this earth as a place of refuge, where souls may lay their weary heads and find rest. But be warned, there is no peace to be found in the works of darkness, only deeper slumber and descent. When the heart turns from me, it sinks like a stone toward destruction. But I am patient and call out still, offering redemption to all who will hear my voice. Even in the lowest places, even in the throes of sin, my arms remain open to receive the repentant. There is no pit so deep that my grace cannot reach. Come now, let us lift our eyes above the mire, and me is hope, life everlasting, and a way of escape from sin's downward pull. Walk in my light always, my child, and you will know a peace the world can never give. There are four kind of people will not enter heaven. Please do not be any of these people. Firstly, those who deny my son. Their choice is a rejection of the light and life I offer, but I take no pleasure in their condemnation, for I am love. My arms remain open always to the repentant, even in the final hour. As long as breath remains, hope remains also. Second, the hypocrites claim me with words alone, yet their hearts remain far. But I judge not by outward show. Many are called, few chosen. If such ones renounce pretense and humble themselves like little children, my mercy exceeds all sin. My greatest joy is transforming Pharisee to saint. Third, the proud stand before me clad in robes of self-righteousness, trusting their own merit. But my kingdom knows no entrance fee of pride or works. I require only an emptied cup held out to receive my grace, the broken and contrite find solace there. Lastly, the unrepentant persist in rebellion with sin as their master. Yet my arms were opened on the cross for all. While justice requires wages be paid, my mercy ever pleads for the lost. None are past hope who live and can repent. My compassion knows no end. In Christ all things are made new, past, present, future. All are redeemed, none excluded who come in faith, however dimly, hoping in my promises. I see each heart's secrets. Judge not, but lift each other gently as I lift you. This is my way.
Now do you understand, my beloved? I want to see you face to face in heaven. So do not become any of these people. Do not fear the mockeries and shames of this world, for they hold no power over your true destiny. I see the burdens you carry and the doubts that weigh upon your heart. But come to me now and lay these heavy cares at my feet. You are my beloved one, whom I created in my image and crown with glory and honor. No humiliation can diminish the light that shines within you. No scorn can eclipse the radiance of your soul. Walk now in the knowledge of your true identity, not as the world defines you, but as I have made and called you to be. This year I will lift you up on wings like eagles. I will remove every stumbling block from your path and level the hills that rise before you. All that has sought to diminish you shall be turned to your praise. Every mockery shall bear witness to my power at work within you. Weep no more, my child, for the time of weeping is past. Joy cometh in the morning. If you wish to soar on eagle's wings above all that has held you down, you need only do these few things. First, keep your heart stayed on me. When doubts assail, and fears rise, lift your eyes above the storm to where I am. I am your refuge and your strength, ever faithful and true. Second, speak only words that uplift and encourage. Let no complaint or condemnation pass your lips, but fill your tongue with songs of praise. Where others spread gossip, you spread glad tidings of the goodness of God. Third, walk in forgiveness where you have been wronged and extend compassion where others have fallen short. Harbor no bitterness or unforgiveness, for these chains bind heavier than any mockery. Let mercy be your mantle and peace your portion. Fourth, claim the promises I have given. Let all things work for good, that greater works than these you shall do. Meditate on truths that empower, not on lies that diminish. You are more than a conqueror through my love. My child, do these things, and your paths shall be made straight. Your steps shall not falter, for I myself will uphold you. I will lift you from despair to joy, from shame to glory. This is your season of ascent. Keep your eyes on me, and spread your wings to soar. Many have asked me if Satan come to me and beg for forgiveness, would I forgive his sin? Satan's rebellion pierced my heart with bitter sorrow, for I had filled him with glory and light above all others. In my infinite love I had given him domain over all my works, desiring he uplift all creation in joyful praise. But pride took root in his soul, and envy darkened his mind, he began to see not my glory, but only that which I had not given to him. In madness he turned against me, and sought to destroy the light within my other children, that he might fill the emptiness within himself. Violence and lies he sowed, that he might feed upon the ruin of all I had made. His sins mounted over the ages, piling one upon another, until at last his heart was locked in eternal defiance against me. For man, though he dared, still his soul clung to hope that I might lift him up once more. But Satan hardened himself into living stone, shattering every vessel of mercy within him. Until this day, he remains lost in the blackness of his own hate. Yet even now, my child, I would take you back if you but asked. Come, and let your tears wash your sorrows away. Let my light shine again in the chambers of your heart. All may be redeemed who walk in the garden of repentance. But you alone can take the first step. I wait still, as always, my arms open wide to welcome the lost one home. Hear now the whispers of your heart. 
Each beat a reminder that time moves swiftly, each breath a gift. In your journey have you seen the faces of souls adrift, longing for purpose, for meaning, for rest? Their eyes seek answers to questions as old as time. Now is the moment to lift your lamp that its light may shine on darkened paths and guide wandering feet. Some will accept your hand, for others keep praying that seeds scattered now may take root when hearts are softened. Be not troubled if rewards seem few. Your task is love, and love knows no ledger. This life is but an instant. How we spend it matters most. There upon that lonely hill, my beloved son endured agony beyond all understanding, bearing the sins of the world upon his perfect shoulders. Though blameless, he accepted all iniquity, every transgression, every evil thought or deed, so that we might be freed from bondage to sin. Can you imagine the anguish of one so pure, suddenly laden with each wickedness ever committed? The dark weight must have seen more than any soul could bear, yet bear it he did, willingly embracing torment, so that through his suffering salvation might be won. In that moment even I withdrew my face, for he had become sin incarnate. My heart ached to see my son so crushed beneath humanity's fault, but it was for love of you that he endured that bitterest of cups. And in his final cry, he triumphed over death itself, breaking the bonds of sin and sadness forever. Now through him we have hope of eternity. All who accept his gracious sacrifice, gaze upon the cross, my children, but see not merely wood, see love which knows no bounds, see mercy which defies all understanding. In that place of deepest sorrow was sown the seed of our joy. Let its message live in your hearts always, that you too might live as my beloved lived, and love as he loved you. I love you. Amen. If you want to hear more words from God, Make sure to watch this video now. God loves you. Amen.